Now I come to Refilwe. This is Refil where she says, I'm having problems with captive. And she gives me three questions. Now what's interesting, Refil, where is I'm trying to figure out how to help you as you study for your other poems. Look at the questions. Okay, so the first thing that I am guessing is that you are having trouble identifying the comparisons. So what do we teach in our school? We teach I, D, E. You start by identifying it. Find it. Then you describe the comparison and then you evaluate. You discuss the comparison. So you're looking at the last line of the first stanza. There it is the brightest tooth in the jaws of distance. I've done this on this program before. Identify, I. What is the tooth in the jaws of distance? Are there teeth in this poem? No. What's he describing? His home. So in this comparison, he is talking about his home as a tooth in the same way trying to draw a jaw. This is a jaw. Okay. In the same way that there might be a bright tooth shining in the jaw of an animal, so his home shines like a tooth in the distance. So he is over here. This is him. And his home is over there. And he says his home shines in the valley far, far away. It's like a very bright truth in the jaw of an animal. Let's go back to the question. Discuss the comparison. Now, I don't know what it means by using a literal figurative language. This doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's start with literal. Literally, he's talking about his home, which is far away in the valley far away. Fine, that's literal. Then figuratively, in the same way that his home shines there in the distance. So a tooth might shine in the dark jaw of an animal. Now, it says discuss. I know lots of you have trouble with discuss questions. You need to say what effect this creates. So what does it show? Choose anything that it shows. The most obvious thing is his home is shining. It suggests that it is a light, and that light draws him. It pulls him towards his home. And he can see it so clearly the way you would see a shining tooth in a dark mouth. Right. Then look at the second one. The sun is compared to a bird. Just explain it. So notice there's no E, there's no discuss, there's just describe. So the sun compared to a bird, two lines of stanza three. Here, the sun has folded his wings that dazzle and has sunken to his hidden nest beyond the hills. So we have some hills. The sun is sinking in the same way that a bird will but will fold his wings and he will settle down on his nest with folded wings so sitting now like this so the sun goes down into his imagined nest under the horizon last one how do people chew the juicy cud explain the comparison in a sentence or two. And we've got it here. You start with chewing the juicy cud. What did we say? The first thing is identify. We have found it. We have the people chewing the cud in this metaphor, comma, what normally chews the cud? Cows choose the cud. Ch cows chew the cud. So people are described as 
cows. Then tell me, in the same way that cows chew the cud, how do they chew the cud? Well, you know that cows have more than one stomach. They regurgitate the, the grass and then they chew it all again. What are these people regurgitating? What are they bringing up? They are chewing the cud of the gathered day. So they are talking about what's happened to them during their day. So cows chew the cud. People talk about what has already happened. That's how they chew the cud. All right. Okay.